The Defense Department's changing the way it will evaluate which employees would get laid off during a future workforce reduction. Military Times reports the department says it will mostly rely on performance evaluations instead of seniority or prior military service. May be a long time, though, before the new system gets put into place. David Chu is president of the Institute for Defense Analyses. David, thanks for coming on the program again. The Pentagon's been very, very clear. It's not anticipating workforce reductions. It's just doing this in case. So is there anything to read into the timing of this, do you think? I don't think I read into the timing. Uh, this is, as you know, a statutory requirement. Congress mandated this in November 2015. Takes a while uh, to get the regulation published, get all the I's dotted and T's crossed. They've got that done. They've outlined the system. Uh, I think it's a thoughtful hierarchy that emphasizes performance. I think that's the big signal that going forward, performance matters in terms of retention. The question, though, is how that performance is measured. Uh, I fall back to the National uh, Security Personnel System, NSPS. That eventually fell because the employees and then Congress didn't trust the way that the performance evaluations were done. What's your sense of how that, uh, some system can be implemented where the employees and the managers and Congress will have confidence that they're keeping the right people if they ever needed to reduce force based on those performance evaluations? Well, I'd quarrel with you a little bit about your diagnosis on NSPS. But okay. setting that aside, I think that is a central issue. Do the players trust the system? Are the performance evaluations meaningful? I think what's helpful here is there are two different performance elements that will be in the ranking that is used to decide if there is a reduction in force. And the department does not anticipate that kind of reduction, but if there is, how will it be decided? There's the overall rating, and then there's the average of the individual scores, the last two performance evaluations on a series of sub-elements. And I think when you put those two together, also tenure does still count. So the tenure groups that have an important uh, role here. So this is a shift in emphasis, not a complete revolution. The, uh, the important things to consider when implementing something like this, what would the one, two, and three, and maybe more than that be for the managers who will do this on the front lines? I think what's most important is to encourage a better conversation between managers and those supervised about what you, the manager, expect in terms of performance, setting the goals. That has been the weakness of most personnel systems both private and public across the board over time. You have tried various arrangements to get at that issue. And I think if that's improved, there'll be a better acceptance by employees of the ratings that come out if they're not all at the top end. There's a real danger in all these systems that everyone walks on water, no differentiation. And then you're back to tenure or other attributes as the basis for how you shape the workforce over time. And that's not where you want to be. And that's where I wanted to go next. For this to be effective, it seems that there will have to be some twos and threes out of fives, and not everybody four out of five. And that has the potential to upset the apple cart before you even get to the upper, the upper out system if, if there is a reduction in force. That's absolutely right. And I think the key is, are individuals in this system, both supervisors and those supervised, willing to accept that fully successful, the mid-range of the three-point scale that is typical in this system, that that's a good rating. There's resistance to that. Everyone wants to be exceptional. It's like Lake Wobegon. Everyone's above average. Yes. Uh, if you can get that achieved, then those who have really done a superior job and get that top rating stand out from the rest. And that's a challenge for every system. The Army, for example, years ago, to deal with officer ratings of just this kind, insisted that the raiders had to follow a profile. And if they didn't, the ratings didn't count. So that is the kind of discipline you have to have in the system for it to succeed. When you have a system that will be potentially this important then in deciding whether I go and you stay, is it time for a revamp of that system so that you don't just have one, two, three, so that there is more nuance? Well, they have some more nuance because, as I indicated, it's your average performance on the sub-elements that is also factored into this equation. But I do think you make an interesting point. Is a three-point scale really helpful? Would, be, would it be better to have more points in distribution so supervisors are more comfortable saying, you know, you're great, but you're not quite at the top? The devil is certainly in the details, though, because then that makes for the more nuance there is, the more objectivity is introduced, and the more potential for the employees to have a difficulty buying in. So I see both sides of it. How do you 
How does one make that decision, make that distinction? Well, that's where I think the goals are so important. If the goals are clearer, and if there's agreement on the goals, uh, particularly if the goals can be measured in some fashion, and that's challenging in government positions, as you know, uh, we're all better off. David, so I'd emphasize goal setting as the key issue here. David Chu, thank you very much for coming. Pleasure on. to be with you.